Hallelujah. Y'all through praising him? Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Nothing like praising the Lord. Amen. God is good. Hebrews chapter 11. What the, what's the message this morning? Save. 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 Come on, everybody. Save. 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 What's the second rule? I'm a saint, not a Christian. I'm a saint, not a Christian. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Chapter 11, verse 1. Everybody got Bibles? Cell phone, tablets, something. Amen. Verse 1, verse 1 and 2, chapter 11. What does it say? Now, faith is the of thing, the evidence of verse 2, for by it, for by it, the elders got a good report. They just believed God. Just a, a minor recap from this morning. And remember, they was, they was going around grabbing a shadow, trying to get something done, and all they had was a shadow. They could not grab anything. They didn't have anything to lock hold on to. Their hand couldn't, their, their faith, their belief, everything was based on something that they could not even get their hands on. We got our hands on it, the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And God said the world wasn't worthy to have these people. We stopped at verse 22 this morning. Amen. Verse 20, I'm sorry, chapter 10 of verse 22. Amen. So let's look at chapter 10, verse 22. I'm going to see if I can get through with this chapter because I don't get to preach for almost two weeks again. So, amen. That's a good thing. I need the rest. Y'all work me hard. Verse 22 said what? Let us. With a true. Come on, everybody's not reading. Verse 22. Read. The true heart in full assurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body. Let's get it right. Let's stop playing around. Amen. You know, when the rapture comes, a lot of folks going to be. A lot of folks. Amen. A lot of folks. And it breaks my heart to know that a lot of folks are walking around trying to be slick. You need a true heart. Amen. You know, if you don't have a true heart, you're not going to go to heaven. He said, if the righteous scarcely make it, where you think the sinner and the ungodly is going? Amen. And if we are busting our back trying to get this right, where you think other folks going, y'all? I tell y'all this. Y'all want to know if y'all made the rapture or not. Either if, 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 if you see me down here, the rapture ain't came yet. <laughs> <laughs> Took y'all a minute to get that. Huh? <laughs> okay, what, what is he saying? I'm making a rapture. Now, here's the scary part. If I die before the rapture, y'all going to be trying to figure out what's the proof. Amen. I'm going up in the rapture or die, but I'm going to heaven. Amen. What am I saying? You got to have a true heart and you got to have full assurance and you got to get your conscience right. Otherwise, you're not going to make it to heaven, man. Amen. Verse 23 said what? You know, I, I hear somebody thinking that pastor think he got it made. Don't go right. I got it. I ain't afraid they say that. I walk boldly. Because I know I'm not breaking no rules. Y'all too busy breaking rules. I, listen, 
I didn't come over here to go to hell. I could have stayed in the world and went to hell. I came over here to go to heaven. Amen. Come on. Verse 23 said what? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. If you are going to say you walk by faith, which is your profession, hold it fast. Believe in what you believe in. There's no need for you to say you believe that God can help you and you don't let him do it. There's no reason for you to say you trust in Jesus. And like I was talking earlier, you still trusting in your lifeboats. I don't have no lifeboat. I don't have I don't have a savings account. Twenty five, ten, five, three. I don't have three thousand dollars saved nowhere. And I'm a pastor with a church. And I don't have three thousand dollars in no savings account sitting there nowhere. But y'all, I, I don't have no other. I don't. I have no other help. Amen. 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 But I don't beg nobody for nothing. Amen. I don't have it, and I ain't afraid. It's God's job. I got ended this morning. I told y'all I haven't paid no rent since I've been saved. Jesus pays rent. I don't pay no rent. Jesus give me the money and say, John, go pay it. Amen. Now, y'all may say, well, what, what are you trying to say? Because I, 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 don't, I don't have no guarantee. Every one of y'all that here have a job. If y'all go work, if y'all go work the normal hours you're supposed to work, you know what your paycheck is, don't you? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what y'all going to give me every Sunday. Sabrina asked me one time, she said, Pastor, how much money do you need every Sunday to be easy? I said, a minimum of five, I'd love to have $6,000 every Sunday. Ask him how many times I get $5,000 on a Sunday. So I don't know what my check is. I don't get a check, by the way. I don't know what, I can't get one. And I'm not complaining, because I walk by faith, and I'm not waving, because if I waver Y'all wouldn't have these luxuries that y'all have. Y'all would not have them. I don't waver. What are, what are you saying? I believe God. He called me to pastor. Trust me, John Porter did not wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a pastor. No, I didn't. Amen. He is faithful that promise. Look what he promised Abraham and all of them. They didn't even get it. They, they, they walked around looking at a shadow of things to come. Verse 24 said what? And let us to provoke us. It's my job to encourage you all, provoke, push, guide, instruct you all. You got to love. You got to love. You got to love one another. Amen. You walking around with attitude towards one another and don't want to talk. Listen, listen, that's grounds for hell. I got to provoke you to love one another. I'm not going to provoke you about getting money. I'm not going to do that because that money don't mean you money don't mean nothing. He said money answers all things. Amen. But money ain't going to get you to heaven. Come on. Next verse. Hallelujah. Verse 25 said what? Now, now, why would a person think they can make it to heaven without going to church? Why would, why would you even think something like that? He said right there, not forsaken and even more so as you see that day approaching. How can a person that don't go to church say they see the rapture approaching? How do you, how do you figure that? Where are you getting your information from? Where are you getting it from? Where, where you getting it from? The only, only reason you know that it's such a thing as a rapture because you went to church and got it, but you don't want to keep going to church to find out how close it is, but yet you know how close it is. Amen? What make you think that you don't have to go to church even more so? Let me pick up the pace. Now, I see the day approaching. I'm the watchman on the wall, and it's my job to tell y'all, don't y'all see the day coming? 
Amen. So I'm provoking you to assemble yourself even more so. We're talking about God. He said God is faithful. He's faithful to come back. And sneak up on you just like he said, because that's what he said he's going to do. I'm going to come like a thief in the night. You ain't going to even know I'm coming. But all of the signs are going to be there. But because you don't believe I'm coming, you're going to ignore the signs. Oh, hallelujah. Now, watch this. We talked all this morning about how Jesus solved our sin problem. We don't have to sin. You ain't obligated to sin no more. Before you got saved, we couldn't help it. We was obligated. Ain't obligated no more. God made, God, watch this. God made it so easy. He said, you shouldn't even have to come to the altar and repent all the time. He said, because you shouldn't be doing it. Watch this now. Verse 26, hallelujah. Look what it said. For if we sin... Stop right there. Read that again. If you sin willfully after you know the truth. So when you don't forgive, when you know you're supposed to forgive. See, all y'all that got problem with me, with, with the things that I preach about, your clothing, your hairstyle, you know, Braids, women in pants, men, yeah, they were undone. Nella was showing me that Bishop Jake's got an earring on now. You know, it's like when you sin willfully, after you know you ain't supposed to do it, what, what does the next part of that verse say? You can't, you can't get your sin removed no more. Remember, he's talking to saints. He ain't talking to sinners because sinners don't have the knowledge yet. So they exclude it. See how, that's why I tell you, the Bible ain't written to sinners. Uh, 90% of it ain't written to sinners. New Testament, it's for saints. A sinner don't know that that's wrong, right? Saints knows that that's wrong. So put yourself as a saint. So after, put, put for after I sin. Change it, read it. Put I instead of we. What does it say? For if I sin willfully, have I told you about something that you know you do wrong and you do it willfully? Do you ignore church willfully? Do you put braids in your hair willfully? Do you go out and have sex willfully? Do you hold back your ties willfully? Do you lie willfully? Are you mean willfully? Do you do all of these things willfully? That means I do them because I like it. I do them because I like it. Now the scripture said, that's why when you get to chapter 11, he said, without faith, it is impossible. God said, I know y'all like looking pretty and handsome. I know y'all like dress. I know y'all like that stuff. I got that. I put it in you. I know you like it. But I don't want you to do it anymore. I gave you an escape goat, Jesus Christ. I gave you a way out. So and, and you know, remember you read this morning, he said, you know what you're not supposed to do. I wrote it on your heart and I wrote it on your brain. So don't tell me you don't know because I put it in you when I gave you the Holy Ghost. Remember we read, he said, the Holy Ghost is going to tell you this stuff is wrong. Now he said, now, if you do this willfully, there remaineth, E-T-H. There is no way for you to get out of this. Hmm. That's cold-blooded, ain't it? There remain it. There is no way out when you sin then. See, we ought to get scared. But it don't frighten us. That's why so many folks are going to go to hell. They don't, they don't think it's a big deal. There remain it no more sacrifice for sins. God said, you don't have a way to cover your sin no more. You hook, you going to hell. Period. There is no more sacrifice. God said, because what else can I do? What else can I do to get you out when I've already got you out and you chose to go back again and again and again and again and you think I'm going to bring you to heaven? 
Remember I told you because Adam sinned, a man sinned, a man had to get us out. A man blood got us in trouble and a man blood got us out of trouble. And God said, now that, remember I told y'all the blood don't work but once. See, people think the blood keep working. The blood only gets you out once. So if the blood keep working, why he say there remain is no more sacrifice? So y'all want to keep hiding the blood? Yeah, the blood still works, but it works for sinners. Don't work for saints. Your faith works for you now. You got to believe that the blood of Christ did it, but the blood don't keep going for you. I'm sorry to disappoint y'all with that. Because he said, if, if the blood still works for you, then why he said there is no more sacrifice? Jesus can't die for you twice. And can't nobody else die for you once. It's been done. That's why we got to stop sitting, y'all. That's why we got to get this thing right. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I tell y'all. See, this is why God say, I haven't promised none of y'all to heaven because y'all all done messed up again. He said, now I got to decide when you come up on your work. Do I want to give you a shot at heaven? Oh, hallelujah. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. We're saved first, y'all. We better remember that. Come on, verse 27. What should you be looking for? Read 27. A fearful looking for. That's what you be doing. You should be ducking. Read from the top. 27. But a certain fearful looking for judgment and a fiery indignation. God say, y'all should be looking for me to rain down fire and kill you. Because there's no more sacrifice for you. There's no, watch this, God said there's no way out for you now. So what, you, what should you, you expect me to kill you? Oh, hallelujah. Because you don't believe me. You don't trust me. You don't understand that when I died for you, I removed all barriers. You don't have to sin no more for no reason. You don't have to lie. You don't have to protect yourself. You ain't got to do all of that. God said, I do that for you. And when you don't trust that I can do that for you and it make you sin, then what, what you need me for? God said, y'all don't need me because y'all still, some of y'all still got your parachutes. You still got your, your, your light boat. You still got your friends. You still got your money. You still got all of the tools that you had. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't cut ties with nothing when you came over here. You kept everything. Well, in case the God don't help me, in case I don't help you. Oh, hallelujah. He that, watch this. Verse 28 says what? He, he that despised Moses, what? Died. He that despised who law? Not God's law, Moses. God said, when they didn't listen to Moses, I killed them. They died. What? Without mercy. He said, and they had two or three people trying to convince me not to kill them. but I still killed them. They didn't have no help. They had a man trying to get God to not do something. When God said, I see everything. God said, your witnesses ain't no good. In other words, your lifeboats can't help you. Your money can't help you. All your giving you did can't help you. All your charity that you did can't help you. All your friends can't help you. Oh, hallelujah. God said they had two or three witnesses. Under mercy, they had, they had two or three witnesses. God said, I didn't care. Wait a minute. God said, and that was Moses' law. That wasn't mine. That was Moses' law. Now, what you think I'm going to do when you don't obey my law? Talking about faith. Without faith, it is impossible. We got to trust God. Cut ties with these, with these things that you all use. And listen, and the other thing, cut ties with yourself. See, now that's our biggest lifeboat. We think we can do stuff and help us. You can't help yourself. God can make you sick. What you going to do? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on. Verse 29. He said what? Of what much. Ooh, glory. Sore. Of how much sore punishment. Suppose ye. Shall he be. Who have trotten under. God say what? Kayla, Kayla, uh, Kayla, put him down. How much more, how much sore rather, punishment, suppose ye, shall he be though thought worthy, who have trodden under the foot, the son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he has sanctified and holy thing, and have done <coughs> God said now what you think I ought to do to somebody that don't obey the gospel what you if I kill them without mercy that disobeyed Moses who was a man who I put thoughts in his head he wrote it down told y'all to obey it told y'all it was from God and y'all didn't listen now, y'all, watch this. Watch this. Y'all got the Holy Ghost. Y'all got me on the inside. Y'all are not listening to a man. You listening to God. You know you listening to God. You willingly disobey God. He said, now, what you think I ought to do to you? What you think I ought to do to you? If I killed you for disobeying a man law, then I told him to write. Well, Moses, you do this. Moses, okay, God said I'm going to kill you, though. So he killed him. He said, now, like I was telling y'all this morning, y'all read the scripture and fuss at me. Why are you fussing at me when you know God said that? You know poet, poetess didn't say that. You know God said that. Well, I don't, I, I don't like it. So why are you fussing at me? Go fuss at God about it. Why are you fussing at me because you read a scripture that the Holy Ghost told you it was right and you mad at me? But I don't think, okay, think whatever you want. Why are you fussing at me though? Why are you holding me accountable for something you know? Oh, hallelujah. See, that's the wonderful thing about the Holy Ghost. When y'all got the Holy Ghost, y'all sanctified, y'all will read the scripture and going to say that ain't what it means or you don't like it. Then why are you holding the pastor responsible? Why are you fussing at the preacher? Why you do that? Oh, hallelujah. He said, now, by the way, a pastor's in the same state as Moses and I kill folk for not listening to Moses. He said, I tell you what. I'm going to give you a break. I ain't going to kill you for disobeying Moses now. I ain't going to kill you for disobeying the pastor. I'm going to kill you for disobeying me. So how do you know you're listening to God? Go back to verse 15. Y'all got it? Who's your witness against you? Look at verse 15. Who's your witness against you? So who told you what would do? Did I tell you or did the Holy Ghost tell you? So why are you fussing at me? Why are you saying I'm preaching wrong when you read it and the Holy Ghost telling you that's what it's supposed to be? Verse 30 says what? For we know. Come on. Don't y'all get quiet. <laughs> Verse 30 says what? For we know him. We know who, who said who said this? Who said vengeance is mine, said the Lord? So every time you dislike somebody, that's vengeance. You dislike them because they did something to you, trying to get even. So why are y'all getting mad at the preacher? Read. What does it say? From the top. Come on, y'all. Everybody reading. See, now y'all don't want to read. Y'all ain't got that afraid. You don't want to read now, huh? So you're going to walk out and be stupid. That's what you, when you don't read, you don't read because you don't want to know because you don't want to be accountable. But what, now watch this. God's so good 
He said, you ain't got to read nothing. I wrote it. Did he say he wrote it in a book for you to get it? He said, I wrote it on your brain and I wrote it in your heart. You ain't got to read it. There's no way out once you get the Holy Ghost, y'all. Well, there is a way out. Two ways. <laughs> Heaven or hell, choose one. Sinners ain't got no way out. Saints, he gave you a way out, but we don't take it. We want to go back to doing wrong. Come on, read from the top. He said what? We know. Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge. Pastor Portis ain't going to judge nobody. When we get to heaven, I'm going to be... I'm going to be up there representing you. But at the end, God is going to be the one to judge you. That's why he put in him. When two or three witnesses went to him, and one of them probably was Moses. He said, I don't care, Moses. Moses, they talked about you. I'm going to kill him. Moses, they didn't listen to you. I'm going to kill him. Go over there and read. And wait a minute. Watch this. That was a shadow. That was a shadow. That was not the real thing. The real thing didn't come up. Like I was showing y'all this morning about me wanting a wife and all I'm going to grab is her shadow. I ain't going to never have a woman reaching out a shadow. Oh, the shadow look good, but that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 31 say what? It is a, it's a fearful thing, y'all. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But people don't make it a big deal. Y'all have no idea what's coming. 32 said, well, but call, I love this. But call to remember the formal days. Now, call to remember the formal day. In which, after ye were illuminated, you endured it. Why, come on, verse 33, partly why ye were made a by the reproaches and the affliction and partly why ye became companion. Now y'all know, y'all know, we look foolish, didn't we, in the world? Didn't we look foolish? We look foolish to the sinners and the saints. The saints thought we was out of our mind and the sinners know we were all just big fools together. Folks just laughed at us. Like y'all laugh at people now when y'all see them doing stuff. You shouldn't, but I know you do. Gaze in stock. You just look at them like, man. You ever just look at folks, how they just live, and you go, man. You just look at them, and they're gaze in stock, huh? You ever go out somewhere, and you see folks just in the club, just dancing, getting drunk, and you shake your head, don't you? Because they like cattle. That don't know. They're just ra- waiting to be barbecued. Y'all missed that. Huh? <laughs> They're cattle waiting to go to hell to be fried. Verse, hallelujah. Verse 34 says what? For ye had compassion of me in my bond. And took joyfully the spoiling of your good, knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better. Paul said, and most folk don't like to give Paul the, the authorship of this, but I do. Doesn't matter. You don't have to believe it or not. That's irrelevant. Somebody wrote it. Amen. But ye had compassion of me in my bond. And took joyfully the spoiling of your good. He said, y'all had compassion on me. And I'm taking all of the offering y'all going to give me next week. I'm taking up your goods. Amen. What else he said? Knowing in yourself that ye have a heaven and a better and and, an endurance. And endurance. In other words, watch this. You were doing that. You were doing that because you think it's going to do you some good when you die. It's not your lifeboat, though. It may be the anchor of the lifeboat, but it ain't the lifeboat. 
It may be a part of the lifeboat, but it is not the lifeboat. There's only one lifeboat, and that's Jesus Christ. In other words, then you can't do enough good for God to believe you. You got to have faith all the way. A little faith is no faith. Because if you say if you lukewarm, I'll do what? Spew you out of my mouth. Listen, y'all. We are saved first. Our first priority is to remember we say, I don't care what's going to happen to you from this day forward. Before you do anything, you convince yourself, you tell yourself, you remind yourself, you encourage yourself, you extol, exhort yourself and say, I'm saved first. So before you make a decision on anything from this day forward, you ask yourself, is it interfering with my faith in Jesus Christ? I'm saved first. If you say yes to that, then look at number two. Number two said, I am a saint. If you can't say yes to one, ain't no need of you asking yourself the second question. Because it's irrelevant. Because if you ain't saved, you're no saint. You're a Christian. And Christians, Christian men wear earrings. Christian men fornicate. Christian men is prejudice. Christian men want a lot of money. Christian men love the cares of this world. Saints, we don't. We deal with what we get, we make what we get work, and the rest is hallelujah anyhow. Amen? Amen. If I'm saved first, my first priority is to make sure I got a pure heart and my conscience is clear. My conscience is clear. How many of y'all lay down at night wondering if you're going to make it to heaven? Come on, you don't have to do that. How many of y'all can boldly say you're going to heaven without Paul and you can say it to anybody? How many of y'all, as, as much as I've taught you about being perfect, how many of y'all can boldly stand up and tell any and everybody I'm perfect? How, can, who, how many of y'all can do that? See, you, you're not sure. I can tell them I'm perfect. I ain't got to tell them I'm just not living it because that's their fault they don't understand it. I understand it. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost, y'all, you're perfect. Now, why don't you learn how to be perfect and live it? The reason you don't live it, that's, that's why I love, that's why I love when, when God said that to me this, this past week and it, he just opened up a whole lot of things to make me stop being afraid to preach so hard in certain areas because I don't want to seem like I'm judging because I don't want to get John in trouble. God said, John, the reason you can preach it is because you're not doing it. Don't be afraid. You ain't doing it. It ain't in your view to do it. Y'all got too many sin for acts in view. Some of y'all planning sin already this week. And you know it's a sin, but you're still planning it, and you won't change it. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 35 uh, said what? Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense. Don't stop believing in Jesus, man. Don't stop. That's your confidence. My confidence is God going to protect me. My confidence is God is going to guide me. My confidence is God got my life. So no, I don't have money sitting in the bank waiting to use. My wife may have some. I don't monitor her money that much. But John Portis don't have none. I don't have it. How many of y'all got thousands of dollars sitting in the bank waiting for a rainy day? I'm waiting on, I'm, I, know, I know folk that die with millions waiting on a rainy day. The rainy day never showed up. Rainy day what? They thought a rainy day meant they was going to lose their house. They didn't know a rainy day meant you was going to lose your soul. Could that million dollars buy their soul and get them right? 
You can't get it. Jesus paid the price. And if you don't use that money to get you out of trouble, ain't nothing going to get you out of trouble. That's the only lifeboat you got. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm not saying you can't save money. I'm just saying don't think that money is going to bail you out of trouble. Because God can have it. You know, I, ain't give, I ain't giving that preacher all my money. Okay. And this preacher ain't going to preach to you either. Not that I won't preach to you, but you won't come to church and let me preach to you. So that's your loss. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't throw away your confidence. In other words, all of y'all got the Holy Ghost. Y'all better not backslide. Amen. Amen. Let me rephrase that. Don't say amen because I'm going to rephrase it. You might, you might not be able to say amen. <laughs> Don't continue to backslide. Because the fact that you don't trust God, you backsliding. You on a, sip, a slippery slope. You on a slippery slope. Not the why you're going to start sliding so good, ain't nobody going to be able to catch you. Which have great recompense of reward. 36 said what? For ye have that after. Look at this. I love this verse. For ye have need of patience. That after ye have done the will of God. You might. Watch this. After you've done his will. You might get heaven. So that means if you don't do it, you know you won't get heaven. And everybody want to preach, oh, God going to bless you. God going to bring you to heaven. All right, keep on believing them lies. He said, after you've done the will of God, what is the will of God to believe on him whom God has sent, which is Jesus Christ? After you believed on Jesus, you might. You might receive the promise. After. You after. You might. Isn't that something? You see, so where did he promise you heaven at? It ain't promised to you. But you've been preached that it's promised to you. Now, technically it is. I'm going to show you all that way down the road. But it's only promised to you. Oh, me to laugh. Aaron looked at me like, okay. Whew. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Technically, it is, but not the way you think he promised it to you. I'm going to leave it right there. Give you something to think about. Because y'all can't figure it out. Y'all ain't, ain't got enough knowledge in God to figure that out. You have to wait till I show it to you. But God said, after you've done the will, you might. You ever had, you know how, especially me, I tell some of y'all, even the adult, well, I might do it, and y'all come back. Pastor, you said you do it. I said, didn't I say might? <laughs> I, I remember what I said, because I know I don't promise too many promises unless I know I can fulfill them, and I can't fulfill none. So I'm always giving me an adverb in there. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You might. Now watch this. See, this is how he gets into chapter 11. Verse 38 said what? Well, now. Now the just shall live by. 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 Got it? But if any man draw back. If any man draw back, I say, I'm going to draw back. My soul shall have no pleasure in him. Isaiah, why does she have to keep talking to you? Sit down. You too, Josiah. Put him in the chair, not in your lap. Stop it. He said what? Now the just shall live by... But if any man draw back, 
My soul ain't going to have no pleasure in you. Don't that mean I don't even like you no more? I don't even like you no more. Y'all know how it is when y'all, somebody disappoints you, let you down, don't have faith in you. What do you say? I don't even like them. You don't even say love. I don't even like you no more. All because they disappointed you. All because they let you down. Oh, hallelujah. You don't even want to be bothered with them. All because they did something, you don't even want to be bothered. God said, I don't even want to be bothered with you no more. You drew back. How many times did you draw back? Once. God said, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. God said, when you doubt me one time, I don't even want to be bothered with you no more. That's cold-blooded, ain't it? How many, how many times you think he meant draw back? If any man. Now, notice in your Bible, any man is in italicis, right? That means they put that in there to help you to understand. Take that out and read it. Now see what you get. Read it. What does it say? But if any. My soul shall have no pleasure in him. I don't like nothing about you no more. Kind of like when a person commits adultery. You don't even want to be bothered with him no more. I don't even like you no more. Let's know love. I don't even like you no more. I don't even want you touching me. I don't even want you around me. Don't even come near me. So when, when think about this. If somebody commits adultery on you and you got to struggle to touch them, imagine how God feels when you commit adultery on him. He got to struggle to touch you. He got to struggle to bless you. He got to struggle to talk to you. He got to struggle to hug you. Imagine how he feel. And you come in the church, yeah, God, yeah, right. Give them what they want. They don't, they don't want nothing from me. Satan, give them whatever they want. They don't want nothing from me. How many of us, God is saying, y'all don't want nothing from me. Y'all faking. That's why y'all get what you want. That's why you get what you want so easily. Because God said, I don't really want to be bothered with you. Because I know you, you ain't going to stay but a minute. Because as soon as I don't give you what you want, you're running back across town again. Oh, hallelujah. As soon as I don't do what you want, you're gone again. But he said, listen. I love Paul. Paul is such an encouraging writer. Look at the next verse. But we're not them. See, that don't, this, see that, that, that's really not us, y'all, right? It's not us. But we are what? Come on, y'all read. I'm trying to give you some encouragement before I tell you, before I let you go. <laughs> but we are not them who draw back unto predict. We are not the one that go back to the world, y'all. We don't, we don't do that. Tommy, we don't do that. At them other, at them Christians that do that. We saints. We don't do that, Mother John. We don't, we don't do that. See how wonderful God is? He tries to say, Angela, you don't, but that ain't you, Angela. I was just telling you about that, but that ain't, that ain't you. That ain't you. You don't do that. We're not drawing back to perdition. We're not going back to the wine bottle. We're not going back to the nightclub. Put Syra on punishment when you go home. She washed dishes for two weeks. Every time dishes get dirty, she wash them. No question asked. But we are not them that draw back to perdition. We are not, we don't do that. We don't do that. Watch this. But of them that believe. Come on, y'all read. But of them that believe it, we believe God can save my soul. Do we believe that? Because we're not them that draw back to perdition. 
We're not, we're not, these, see, the, the ladies at Church of Apostolicity, y'all ain't gonna go back to wearing braids. Y'all ain't gonna do that. Y'all ain't gonna go back to putting weaves in your hair. Y'all ain't gonna do that. Y'all ain't gonna go back to wearing pants. Y'all, nah. Y'all ain't gonna go back to disobeying your husband. Y'all ain't, ain't gonna do that. Y'all. Y'all believe that's right and I'm gonna do it? I ain't breaking no rule. See, the, uh, the men of Church of Apostolicity, they threw being lazy. They, 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 they say, uh -uh, I ain't lazy no more. The men of Church of Apostolicity, they gonna say, I'm taking care of my wife. She ain't gotta beg for nothing no more. Yeah, cause y'all, y'all, y'all put up. Y'all ain't gonna tell your wife to shut up no more, cause they keep running their mouth. We don't do that. No, we don't do that. Y'all don't do that. See, Aaron, Aaron ain't gonna yell at Cassini no more. He don't do that. He ain't going back to perdition. He don't do that. Oh. We believe God can save me and save my wife and save my husband and save my children. Y'all single folk, y'all ain't got no more girlfriends and boyfriends. Y'all uh -uh, y'all don't do that. Y'all through with sex till y'all get married. No more sex. Y'all ain't sneaking around drinking no more. So y'all don't do that no more. Y'all don't do that. <laughs> Y'all done put the wine bottle down. Y'all ain't got no, 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 no 40 ounces no more in the back of your cap. Y'all don't do that no more. Because we believe God can say we don't do that no more, y'all. We don't do that. Oh, hallelujah. Right? We don't do that. So I can go to the next verse now, right? Now, faith. Is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things. And because we don't do that no more, we're going to get a good report. We ain't going to get no bad report. We're going to have a good report. Because we believe God could keep me from drinking. God could keep me from lying. God could help me take care of my family. God could show me how to live. Because we don't do that no more. The Holy Ghost let me know when I go to lie. The Holy Ghost said you can't lie. So my next step, I'm telling the truth. Because I don't do that no more. Because faith is the something. I believe God can stop me from lying. I believe God can take me off the bottle. I believe God can take fornication and adultery. I believe God can take lying and stealing. I believe God can stop me from doing that old foolish stuff. So therefore, I'm going to get a good report. Hallelujah. Even though I crave it, I thought it, but I did not do it. Why? Because I believe God to the saving of my soul. And I'm not going to mess up. I ain't messing up no more. I ain't messing up no more. Because God going to do this thing. And everybody said, yeah. come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe God. Rule number one is what? Rule number two is what? Come on, stand on your feet. Rule number one is what? Rule number two is what? Rule number one is what? I'm saved first. Rule number two is I'm a saint. I'm not a Christian. And everybody said? Amen. All right. Who closing? Me, see? <laughs> Told you no thinking. Take no thought. You better hit it because they up there asleep. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise for the word, for our faith. Amen. For increasing our faith. Amen. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for just another word. Father God, Lord, 
Lord, help us not to be lukewarm, Lord Jesus. Help us to be either hot or cold, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for the message that came forth, Father God, all day. Lord Jesus, in increasing our faith, Father God, and just help us, Father God, Lord. Help everybody in our audience that's watching over the um, internet, Lord Jesus, the people that couldn't make it out, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for thinking of us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for correction, Father God. We just thank you for everything that you do. Lord, we thank you for safe travels home, Lord Jesus, and we ask these many blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.